Are genetically modified organisms a sustainable farming technique and how do they impact the environment? This report summary answers a few of the key questions associated with GE plant species. Genetic engineering is introducing different or disassociated genes into a plant species and there are two main forms. Both involve sharing evolutionary traits across plant species. Since 2008 though, GE crops make up more than 80% of produce used for humans in the United States alone. The main advantages being pest resistance, increasing yields and some minor advances in drought tolerance. Evidence from my research shows that GMOs are potentially less invasive However, it should be noted that overall agricultural production has a negative effect on the environment. Research into climate and earth sustainability show exponential drops in fresh water levels, arable land, as well as increase in extreme climate conditions, all of which impact farming produce. These, coupled with an increase in population, leave a monumental task for agriculture companies to feed the world. It is evident more than ever that a collaboration of techniques is needed to impact the environment less. Studies also revealed negative impacts on dependent species, notably skylark birds and monarch butterflies. Both species stand to benefit from herbicide and pesticide reductions, but depend on weed populations as food resource. With successful reductions in weed densities, there has been a notable drop in monarch butterfly populations. And although short-term research indicates a reduction in chemical spray use, long-term side effects counter this evidence. So what are the risks and what are the myths? With new herbicide tolerant crops being developed, ultimately weed species have adapted, possibly due to cross-pollination or residue. There are now reports of HT weed species reducing any positive reductions in herbicide use. GMOs have not been modified to grow faster and larger. Apart from unpublished experiments, the evidence for superfood is vastly an invention of media. Main crop yields come from selective breeding and the gains made from reducing past pest disease losses. Companies can and do withhold information and restrict independent research leaving consumers unaware. This is now heavily focused on appropriate labelling. GE foods must be labelled by law in Australia, yet CSIRO heavily restrict GMOs in Australia. This report reveals the need for more research in alternative farming practices which do not involve genetically engineered and avoid inefficient methods which use high amounts of water, herbicides, pesticides and petroleum fuels. It is clear that an adoption of various methods could potentially reduce impacts on the environment. However, until food production is separated from the environment, it will always impact it. The public needs to be informed. Information sites like GMO Answers is a good start, as well as compulsory labelling. However, the most valuable information is research, specifically long term. So what can you do? Know your food and know the facts. There is substantial evidence out there further explaining genetic engineering and the processes involved. Understand farming practices in use in your country. Should Australia be researching into farming methods which impact the environment less or use less resources such as drought resistance?